You saw right? this coming in 2020 and you were like, well, no. Well, I got fired. Okay. Right. So okay. I, I, I did feel like something wonky you, you was happening. You choked somebody? Is that what happened? Nah, you, I should have. <laughs> I should have. But no, I didn't. Um, that's a whole other long convolute. So you know what it comes down to? I'm sure it's a bunch of different things and someone will say one thing and some, but a lot of it had to do with how much fight i was giving them giving them like mm. at some point your bosses are going to tell you kick rocks because they're sick of hearing you tell them that you keep fucking up like yeah. and again yeah, yeah. i'd be in a boardroom it would be i'd be the only person of color in a boardroom and we're we're talking about a black music radio station and i don't claim to be the spokesperson for black people i've right. just been attached to this culture for so long yep. and i bring a certain level of radio expertise mm -hmm. right but i don't i don't say that i I'm the spokesperson. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like but your I've resume does speak for itself. But I always considered my some day one, I'm a guest. Right. Right? right. You do your job. Right. You do it well. And you become somebody who gets to stay longer. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And But you're still a guest. Well, let's be real. Everybody knows your name in the industry here. That's fine, you're but right. that's based off yeah. of of the of the resume. Yeah, exactly. Okay, resume. that's right. Yeah. But you're still yeah. a guest. Yeah. Right. Like I, the, again, I talk to the programmers at Hot 97, and you know they say to me. Almost verbatim, it's like, listen, Hot 97, we have white listeners, we have Hispanic listeners, we have black listeners. I don't care what the white and Hispanic listeners want to say. Right. The black listeners dictate what we do, and the rest of them will listen. Really? That's 100%. Wow. Oh, wow. Because, and this is a Hispanic guy as the program director, because he understands the culture. The culture, yeah. Right? Maybe. He understands that it's culture-driven. Yeah. So I had a boss who would argue... Toronto is 50% white and 50% other, so we got to make sure that our research panel reflects that. And, I'm, and I would argue back saying, why are you letting somebody, because you ask a bunch of questions before you let people into a panel. And some of those questions are, what's your favorite station? Mm -hmm. And what is your second favorite station? Okay. And one of those answers has to be flow. flow. <laughs> so either it's your first or your second. Right. But they would also allow people who say we're second in and that you know this person would say virgin's my number one station mm -hmm. okay cool you still have to have that audience but why are you letting them dictate what i play on flow like they should you it's the you, same thing with you the listen labels. to their feedback yeah, yeah but they don't dictate it the people that are you know what i mean the the the, the people that drive this station mm -hmm. are the ones that should tell you what should be played on it and again if you go back to the whole you know black culture drives pop culture mm -hmm. it's like that's how it works. Like, you know, I, I, I went through this phase where I felt like my guy, you know, he wanted the station to be a reflection of, you know, Post Malone, Iggy Azalea, Eminem. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 the Bill Moore. Non I see what you're doing here. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's what he wanted the station <laughs> yeah, to be. Yeah, I see what you're doing there. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. and, and it was, again, that's why I have PTSD because I remember some of the shit that right. they would they would either say or make me make me do at the station. It's like, mm. I think about some of the records we were playing, I'm like, why the fuck were we doing this shit? Yeah, like, yeah. this is not what the station is supposed to be. Yeah. Do you have a uh, a proudest uh, radio moment? A moment that you're most proud of as oh, maybe man. a DJ or a director or whatever position? Time and I place. Don't, I don't know if I if Something I that it. sticks out, memorable, maybe? Look, I tell people, I tell people, every person that I've ever had a conversation with that is, you know, like a, a homegrown talent or whatever, I always say to them, um, and it's almost like it's a broken record, but I say, don't worry about Canada. Right. I go, they're, they're never going to support you. They're never going to love you. Right. You know what I mean? You could get radio playing and stuff, but that doesn't mean that, yeah. you know, are you, are you getting played because of CanCon or are you getting played because they actually like you? Right? You don't know here. Right. Right, right, when right. you know is when you blow up leave, somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you didn't leave, but you blow up somewhere okay, else. Okay. You, you achieve success somewhere else. I even think about rock bands, mm. right? Like I think about, um, you know, as much as you know, people shit on Nickelback, they're fucking huge outside of Canada. Oh, in the States, Do you know what I mean? A, like they were massive. Name. There was a simply simple simple plan, simple plan yeah. big yeah. outside yeah. of Canada. Yeah. You know who wasn't big outside of Canada? Headley. Right. Headley. Had, they tried to get him signed in the U.S fucking brick right didn't work yeah and then they were they were massive here you know why because of can con mm. right all these stations have to play your shit because you might be the best of what's here yes but no one outside of here gives a fuck we're hard and i handle my business look up in the sky whole squad let's get it no limit no no no, no, no limit